This is a very gentle yoga practice designed to support all stages of pregnancy. This is a session to come to on the days when maybe you're feeling a bit low energy, maybe you're experiencing some aches and kind of pains from the growing belly, maybe in the low back, or even early in the first trimester when your energy levels take a dive and it's hard to get your body moving in a full workout. This one is very grounding, will stay most mat bound for the full duration with a nice long relaxation at the end. So it's really designed to restore your energy levels. It won't be depleting. It won't require a lot of exertion, but it will help you kind of get into all the major joints to give your entire body a bit of stretch, a bit of love. And we're focusing really on lengthening the side waist. So the sides of the spine, this is especially important during pregnancy as the, the center of gravity starts to change as your hips start to relax we're more prone to imbalance from side to side which can create back pain it can create even neck pain and shoulder pain so in today's practice, we'll target each side of the body independently, both lengthening and strengthening the side waists to support you in balance as your body grows and changes. For today, you will need a cushioned surface. So if you're practicing on a carpet or a rug, that should be sufficient. I also like to add just a, a rolled up blanket, kind of a nice flat fleece blanket or kind of one of the yoga blankets that are available to cushion your sits bones when you're in a seated position and then to provide a bit of cushioning for the knees and shins when we're spending a lot of time in these kneeling positions that are just more gentle, more accessible during pregnancy. You'll also want a firm pillow or a couch cushion, or I'm using a bolster for our final resting position. This will help you get into a very comfortable place that ideally will help you drop into that re relaxation more deeply. So make sure that you have those two items. Other than that, all you need is a space to practice and your breath. You've shown up and that's the hardest part. So let's get started with this gentle yoga practice. We'll begin our very gentle yoga practice today in a comfortable seated position. If you have a soft rolled up blanket that you can use under your sitting bones, that can be helpful to create a softer surface. We'll also be spending a significant portion of the practice in a kneeling position so that blanket or cushion can help create a bit more comfort in the knees and shins. For the end of our practice, for your final resting position, I recommend having a firm pillow or a couch cushion if you have a bolster something that will provide a bit of support to the legs and help you rest more comfortably so if you need to take some time to gather those things just to create the most comfortable practice for you today once you arrive in your seated position start to shift slightly forward on the sitting bones lift up tall through the spine and close your eyes you might bring a hand to your growing belly, a hand to heart, and just start to ever so slightly deepen your breath. Maybe it's the first time today that you're bringing some awareness to that breath. And as you do this from the crown of your head all the way down the spine, into your limbs, your hips, your pelvis, just start to Take a survey of the body. Notice how the breath flows in and out. Are there places where it becomes stuck or where it feels constricted? Particularly as your lungs negotiate the space that is changing inside your torso. Where do you feel any tightness? or tension? Where do you feel expansion? And just using these quiet moments in the beginning of our practice to really open that line of communication. This practice of 
becoming aware of your inner landscape. It's a valuable exercise, particularly as you prepare for the birth of your baby. And so start to sharpen that skill little by little through these movement practices. When you're ready, gently start to blink your eyes open. And relax your hands down on your knees. Take a few side sways, just wiggle the spine. And then bring your fingertips to your shoulders. Start to circle the elbows nice and wide really exploring the full range in that joint, listening for any <laughs> sounds that might arise, switching directions without urgency. You might feel some stickiness, just really acknowledging what that might be telling you, using these opening movements to encourage blood flow and circulation, to really nourish your joints. And start to reach the arms overhead with an inhale. Take your left hand down to the side. Send your right arm up and over. Nice, deep side bend. You can bend into that left elbow if that feels good. I'm really opening the side channels of the body that have a tendency to get compressed or shortened, even as the belly stretches. Come up through center, take your right hand to your left ear, gently encourage the left ear to left shoulder. Excuse me, right ear to right shoulder. I'm mirroring you in movement. I'm really taking it easy with this stretch, just trying to create some space in the neck and shoulders. Come back through center, release your right hand down beside you. And here, just some simple neck rolls. So keeping the shoulders nice and still, keeping the torso upright. Just start to circle the neck in one direction and then the other. Being slow and intentional with your movement, turning the head as it feels good, maybe lifting the chin. And then once again, we'll reach up with an inhale, both arms. Take your right arm down to the side, left arm stretches up and over. Side bend. Acknowledge any difference you might feel from one side to the other, creating balance as we stretch each side independently. Breathe, inflate the rib cage, the belly. Let the diaphragm really descend with each inhale. As you come up, take your left hand to your right ear. Encourage your left ear to left shoulder. Again, being very gentle, not forcing any sensation. This is a gentle yoga practice. So we're not looking for kind of the max range or maximum sensation, but just that gentle awakening throughout the body. Come back through center, both arms reach. And then let your fingertips stretch out behind you. Press down into the finger pads. Lift up through the center of the chest. Create a bit of tone in the low belly, lifting the hip points and the low ribs around your bump toward each other so that you can really stretch into the upper chest. Feel that breath expand here. And then slowly release, coming into cobbler pose or Baddha Konasana, bound side angle. So you can let the soles of your feet touch, let your knees relax out to the sides. You might find that it feels good to grasp the shins or maybe the ankles and just lift up nice and tall through the spine. You might slide your feet out in front of you just slightly and then offer a gentle forward bend. So again, not anything extreme, just enough to feel a bit deeper sensation in the hips, maybe some awareness in the spine. You might curl and round the spine in here. And just kind of a softening as the knees open side to side. As you slowly come up, bring your right 
foot in so that the heel is coming to the inner thigh and extend your left leg out long. We'll start with a bit of a flow here. So your right hand comes out to the side, left arm sweeps over. And then imagine like you were seaweed on the bottom of the ocean, just allowing your arms to switch and sway. So reaching up, maybe wiggling the fingertips, swaying to one side. You might come forward and down as if you were being carried by a wave, sweeping up and open. And let this be an opportunity to really tune in to that feminine creativity. Just let your body move however it wants to, however feels best. You can start to open it up a bit as you come down on the right, lift the hips skyward, maybe reach with the left arm. And again, switching sides, feeling that stretch in either direction. So again, option to lift the hips if that feels appropriate for you in this moment on this day. We'll take twice more like this, sweeping up on this side and coming down. Last one like this, lift the hips, maybe hold for a moment, feel that stretch and slowly come down. And this time we'll hold the side bend over your straightened left leg, reach the right arm over top. And then here, just a bit of movement for the shoulder, for the upper back as you bend and straighten the elbow. So really feeling the lats engage and giving a bit of rhythm to the static stretch so that it feels more fluid, it allows your body to kind of tap into the subtleties of sensation that might be available rather than just sitting and holding in a stretch. Last few here. And slowly come up. Take some time, just notice how you might feel different from one side to the other. And then we'll exchange legs. So you'll bend your left knee and take your right leg out to the side. And again, we'll find our seaweed flow. So you reach the left arm overhead, right arm extends out for support. And then we switch sides in any way that feels good to you. So again, you can come down and forward, sweeping the arms, letting them move independently. Try to soften some of the edges loosen the rigidity that might be present in the elbows or the wrists. Just let things flow. This is another great practice for really just kind of exploring the body, noticing how you feel, maybe finding new areas that are a bit tight. And then again here, if you choose to do so, as you come over the left leg, press into that left hand, lift the hips, sweep the right arm overhead, and come down, switch. So again, only if it feels good, you can start to lift into that kneeling side plank, the supported variation. But don't sweat it if it doesn't feel quite right just yet. We'll have another opportunity to visit that pose later in the practice. Last one like this. Lift the hips and slowly come down. This time we'll hold in the side bend. So here you can have the right arm on your shin or on the mat. And then once again, just adding that fluid movement in the upper arm. So the left arm is moving elbows hugging into the sides and reaching out. So we're engaging the back, really working into the shoulder. You might choose to rotate the wrist, really just explore external and internal rotation here. Last one like this. And slowly come up through center. We'll stay here for a moment, just coming into a bent knee forward fold. If you have your blanket, you might set it off to the side so that it's not in your way. Here, keep a very generous bend in the knees, flex your feet, and you can keep the legs a little bit wider than hips width distance, so you have lots of room to come between the inner thighs. And here, take your hands on the balls of your feet, press your feet into your hands, pull your hands back into your feet, so really stretching the shoulders, the upper back. You might even curl the chin to the chest. 
and then slowly come out of that. We'll turn now to tabletop. So make your transition however it feels best. We'll come into hands and knees. So the shoulders are over the wrists, the hips are over the knees. We'll enjoy several rounds of cat and cow spine. As you inhale, soften the belly, shine the sitting bones back, send your gaze up, stretch the front side of the body. And as you exhale from the tail, round in, curl the spine, chin to chest, press through the hands. As you move through this very simple expression in the spine, one that allows you to explore the full range of motion, start to notice the sensation in your belly as it grows. So let each practice be a benchmark so that you're really staying attuned to the changes that are happening so that you can sort of intuitively know how to adapt your practice, your movement, your daily activities, just by virtue of paying attention. So do you feel maybe some stretch around the navel? Do you feel it in the low back? What can you learn from this very simple expression and movement? And release, come back to a neutral spine. Just allow your hips to sway here for a moment. So we'll come now to turn to the long side of your mat. If you have your cushioned surface and you'd like to keep it, you can place that in the center of your mat. Come into a kneeling position on that surface. So I'll demonstrate with this blanket here. So we're on hands and knees. And from here, I'll be mirroring you in movement. Take your left leg out to the side. So half kneeling position here, right knee is bent, left leg is out long. And then slowly walk your hands toward your body, reach the arms overhead, big inhale. Stretch the side waist long. And then as you exhale, left hand comes down, right arm stretches up and over. As you do this, root down through the right shin. Feel the expression of gate pose. If you like, you might offer some support for your belly or just that anticipation if you're early in your pregnancy, just creating that space, kind of that awareness, that welcoming as it begins to grow. Slowly come back up. Let the arms reach out to T. Keep your left toes pointing toward the short edge of your mat and then bend deeply into that left knee. Find half warrior two. Really feel the expansion across the base of the pelvis and notice, can you, as the pelvis stretches, avoid collapse. So toning the inner thighs, creating a bit of magnetism between the limbs, between the support points so that the pelvis is supported. This will pay dividends as your belly grows where you're not requiring or you're not kind of putting all of the load into the bowl of the pelvis, but instead you have this supporting musculature that's ready to receive that weight. Let the shoulders rest directly over the hips. Just feel that deepening across the pelvic floor. Let your left elbow come to your left thigh. Once again, stretching right arm up and over. Maybe dial the left thigh open a bit using that forearm to leverage a deeper stretch. Back up through half warrior two, the arms come to T. This time, cartwheel your hands down to the inside of your left foot. And here, we'll simply bend and straighten that left leg, stretching the spine. So again, this need not look a certain way. We're simply working more space, more length into the back of the leg. So feeling that side runner stretch here, working into the inner thighs, the groin, the hamstring. You might even find a bit of circling with hip circles here, exploring that hip joint. Again, encouraging circulation, nutrition to arrive. Last few breaths here. Again, just move wherever your body guides you. And then slowly rise back up, reach both arms high. Take your hands to your low spine, maybe create fists around the sacrum, hug your elbows into each other. And then as you lift up, back bend slightly in the upper back. So we're focusing this more in the upper spine. Your belly's stretching enough already. It need not exaggerate that back bend that's already happening. And that's why we have the support of the hands on the sacrum here. 
and then slowly fold over your legs. You can turn the left toes up and lower down any amount. So you might be kind of at an angle, just negotiate the space with your belly as needed. If this is too much flexion in the knee, you might be a little bit more upright. Just find what works for you. Be here for a few more breaths. And slowly come back up onto that half kneeling position with the hands resting. As I mentioned before, we have one more opportunity to explore this supported side plank. So start to walk your hands toward your right knee. Keep your right hand pressing down. You can bring the sole of the left foot into the mat now. Sometimes it feels good to make a fist with that supporting arm and then reach the left arm overhead. You might stretch it out long, just explore this supported side plank. Such great therapy for the sides of the waist, the round ligament, if you experience any pain there, this can be a great way to kind of relieve that tension. And then from here, you have the option, you might just stay here and explore this stretch. If you feel comfortable, stable, and strong, you can start to bend your left knee and reach your left hand for that left foot, anywhere that it connects. And don't sweat it if it doesn't connect today or tomorrow. Just create that directionality, that intention. If you have the clasp, you can start to press your foot into your hand, your hand into your foot, broaden across the chest, really lift through the center of the heart in half bow. Slowly release, extend that arm overhead. And we'll come back the way we came. So back toward the long edge of your mat, come into a full kneeling position. So both knees side by side. And just take a moment to observe the difference between the sides of the body. Before we transition to the second side, let's reach the arms up, come into that kneeling place. Take your right arm under left for eagle arms. Here, we'll just create a bit of flow. So as you come down, round the spine, curl the elbows into the belly, chin to chest, and then reverse that. So come up to kneeling, send your elbows skyward, brace the belly, bring your hands toward your forehead, and then coil in. Twice more like that. Inhale, up, out, open. Press through the shins and inward. Last one like this, big inhale. And exhale, release, hands come down. Back to the kneeling position. I'm gonna adjust my blanket here just for a moment. And then this time we'll take the right leg out to the side. So find your stable position, left shin pressing into the mat and slowly rise up for gate pose, arms reach, inhale. And as you exhale, side bend. So the right hand comes down. You might create that support once again for the low belly or that invitation, that anticipation of what is to come. Maybe send your gaze skyward. And then as you lift up, the arms reach out to T. So feel with your proprioception where your arms are at the horizontal. And then we'll turn the right toes to face the short edge of your mat. Create a deep bend in that right knee. Explore the bowl of the pelvis. Half warrior two. Telescope the ribs out of the hips and really lengthen the spine here. As you're ready, right forearm comes to right thigh, turn the palm to face up, send your left arm up and over. Again, here in side angle, such a great opportunity to provide some external support for the belly as is appropriate. Big breath in, slow breath out. Then we'll slowly come up through center here. Cartwheel your hands to the inside of your right foot. And here, once again, simple straighten and bend of that right leg. So as you straighten the leg, the toes come up, the foot flexes, you'll feel that stretch on the back side of the leg and come forward. Let there be no urgency to your movement. 
Let it be completely fluid, gentle, slow, and strong. You might even start to circle the hips a bit. Last few rounds like this. And last one. Slowly come back through center. Reach the arms up and overhead. Take your hands to your low spine, to the sacrum, maybe with fists. Support the low spine and then lift up through the chest. Any amount gentle back bend. So this is sort of a half kneeling camel pose, but we're really focusing on the upper chest, the upper back here. And as you're ready, release the hands to the mat, turn the toes of your right foot skyward and fold any amount. So again, you might create a bit of an angle so that you have space for the belly. You might point and flex the toe, just explore the sensation. Where can you make it change? Where do you need it most? And then as you slowly come back through your kneeling position, walk your hands over to the left. Keep your left hand planted. Send your right arm overhead for supported side bend. So really allowing both sides of the waist to lengthen equally, particularly the bottom side. So creating as much distance as you can between the hip crease and armpit. And then only if you're feeling super stable here, start to bend that right knee, reach the right foot behind for half bow pose here. Again, don't sweat it if you don't create the connection today. It's always there for you. It's part of the practice in yoga is some days we're there and some days we're not. And the benefit is in the journey either way. Release as you're ready. Come back through center. You can bring your right knee in come back to the kneeling position sway the hips we'll find our camel flow once again on this side but this time take your left arm under for eagle arms so you might wrap at the upper arms the elbows the forearms and the wrists you can also take backs of the hands together or even reach just for opposite shoulders and then as you're ready, exhale, round in, coil the spine, chin to chest. So really contracting inward. And then the opposite, so expanding, reaching out, lifting up, stretching the spine. Exhale, round. Inhale, lift up, stretch up, reach up. And exhale, turn inward. Last one like this. Inhale, stretch up, reach and exhale release your hands down from here you can turn to the short edge of your mat once again coming into that tabletop we'll explore our first entry to downward dog so if downward dog is not in your practice particularly in pregnancy you can always stay in tabletop if you'd like to explore downward dog tuck the toes under and we'll unfold it bit by bit, so in order of priority. So the, the goal of downward dog is to stretch the spine. So keep your knees deeply bent, the heels lifted as you send the hips skyward. You can straighten the arms, press down and forward through the finger pads. Rotate the inner upper arm bones toward the front of your mat, so in toward your ears and forward. This is a perfect downward dog with the knees bent and the heels lifted, so long as you feel that lengthening in the spine. Then slowly, you might start to play with straightening the legs. Just explore how that feels. Maybe sway the hips side to side. Be mindful of the pressure in your eyes and face. You might look forward towards your thumbs if it gets to be too much. And then final priority, <laughs> And kind of last on the list is flattening the heels to the mat if that feels good. You can also explore with just pedaling the feet one at a time. So really unpacking the posture to serve its best intention. So if we force the heels down, but it means that the spine rounds, then we've sort of lost the value of downward dogs. Instead, Keep the spine lengthening and slowly work towards heels to the ground. 
We'll add a bit of flow now. Inhale, let the knees come down to hover, stretch the spine, and exhale back to downward dog. If you need to, you can let the knees touch. Inhale, come down, stretch the spine in a neutral place, so crown to tail lengthening, and then come back to downward dog. Almost like a bear plank here. Inhale, come forward, knees hover, and downward dog. So from here, we'll slowly start to walk the hands toward the feet, the feet toward the hands. If you have your blanket or your cushioned surface, you can set it off to the side for now. Keep the knees deeply bent as you bring your feet and hands closer together. And then we'll take the left hand, keep it planted on the mat, bend deeply into the left knee, open the right arm up. So really root down through the right foot. Straighten that right leg. Shift the hips forward so they're over the ankles. And feel the side body stretch, kind of that IT band on the right side. And we'll slowly exchange. So right hand comes down, bend into the right knee, straighten the left leg, reach and open. Really root down through the knife edge of your left foot to facilitate that stretch and awakening. And then slowly back through center. Bend into the knees, roll up bone by bone. Coming to a standing position. We'll add just a little bit of flow, a quick balance posture, and then we'll come back down to close our practice together. So finding the top of your mat, I like to offer this vinyasa really just so that you can be empowered to create these modifications as needed. If you're going to a public class or you're using some other yoga practices in the Lune Roadmap, you know how to modify as your pregnancy progresses. So sun salutation A here, inhale, reach the arms up and overhead, maybe out to the sides. And then as you exhale, fold with bent knees over your legs. Inhale, lift the spine halfway, stretch the crown away from the tail. And as you exhale, step back to tabletop, so the knees come down, tabletop position. With the inhale, slide up into camel pose. So we lift up onto, onto the shins, hands come to the sacrum, gentle back bend. So we're doing this in lieu of cobra, so you need not bring the belly to the floor. Then stretch out, exhale, puppy pose. Stretching the arms forward, lifting the hip creases up and back. You have the option here to stay in puppy or unfold to downward facing dog. As you inhale, gaze forward, bend the knees, lift the heels. Step your feet to meet your hands. Lift halfway, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach up. Maybe take the arms wide. And exhale, hands to heart center. We'll do that twice more. So this is your modified sun salutation A for pregnancy, safe for all trimesters. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, fold with bent knees. Keep the weight in the balls of the feet. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step back to tabletop. Inhale, camel pose. Slide your hands up and back to support the sacrum. Lift the heart. Exhale, puppy. Slide the arms forward. Crown towards the earth. Option here with your next full breath to unfold to downward dog. Ending on the exhale. Inhale, gaze forward, lift heels and hips, and step your feet to your hands. Inhale, lift halfway, and exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach up, stretch the arms out and overhead, and exhale, bring your hands down through your heart. Last round with breath, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Full belly breath, inhale, halfway lift. And exhale to tabletop. Inhale, camel pose, slide the arms up, support your spine. And exhale, puppy, reach the arms out, hips lift, crown lowers. Option to unfold, downward dog, exhale. As you inhale, lift the heels, gaze forward, bend your knees. Step the feet to the hands. Inhale, lift halfway, and exhale, fold. 
Inhale, slowly rise up, reach up, root down through the legs. And as you exhale, hands come down through the heart. Arms relax down by your sides. I'll turn to face you now. We'll have one final balance posture kind of to cap off our practice before we bring it back down to the mat. So tree pose is one of my favorite single leg balance postures for pregnancy. It's accessible, but it's definitely a way to stay tuned in to your changing center of gravity. So we'll start to shift weight into the right foot. Just feel that interplay. So we're giving weight from the left to the right. Find your stability at each step of the way. You can lift your knee out to the side, your left knee up. Dial that hip open and bring the left foot either above or below the knee. So you might even be at the ankle with a bit of a kickstand. You might be at the shin, or you might be all the way up to the inner thigh. Once you're there, allow your body to wiggle and wobble, shimmy and shake, move around so that you can feel where your center of gravity is. Let your body kind of create that natural attunement. You might press the finger pads together to create some St stability towards the midline. As you press your foot into your standing leg, press your standing leg back into your foot. That'll allow the outer glutes to, to, to tone and to spread the hips in external rotation. You might play with your arm position, maybe bring the arms out or overhead, growing your branches tall. Whatever feels most appropriate for you. Last big breath here, focus on a non-moving point. Create that focus, that intentionality. And then slowly release your foot from your thigh, but keep the knee lifted. So the foot kind of suspended in this balanced posture. Cross that left leg over the right. Start to bend into that left foot and take your right hand over to the left. Clasp your left fingertips around your right wrist. So side bend here. This is definitely a practice of opening those side channels to create more balance and evenness across the spine. Slowly come up through center, uncross the legs, shake it out. We'll come into our second side now, so shifting weight into the left foot. Again, give the weight from the right to the left and just play with the balance first with the free leg. So just experience how that feels. And it might be very different from one side to the other, and that's okay. And then use the strength of your hip flexors to lift that right knee out to the side and find the placement that feels most appropriate. So maybe above or below the knee, you might have the toes in that kickstand shape. Press the finger pads together, create balance to the midline. Lift up tall through the spine. And again, allow your body to move around. You might intentionally throw yourself off balance just a touch so that you can really tune in to what it feels like to find your center. Spread the toes, stretch the feet. So really rooting through all four corners of your left foot. Maybe playing with your arm position a bit, swaying your branches in the wind. Last big breath here, inhale. And then release the foot from your standing leg. Let that knee come out wide. Cross the right leg in front of the left. Bend into that knee. Reach your left arm up and over. Clasp right fingertips around the left wrist and stretch. <coughs> We slowly come back up through center, shake out the legs. We'll take one final standing posture here. Take the legs out wide, reach the arms out and open, and then fold over the legs. Here you might take downward dog arms, so really reaching the arms forward and out. Shift the weight into the ball mounds of your feet so much that you feel your heels might lift. Shine the sitting bones up and back. Rotate your inner thighs back in space. So you're mo moving the navel towards the pubic bone. And then here, just allow your hands to walk back up under your shoulders and allow the hips to sway. So a gentle rock side to side. You can turn the toes out, heels in now. Bend the knees deeply. Find that deep goddess squat. Sort of shift side to side. Your body will naturally know how it wants to move. 
And then we'll just ever so slowly heel toe the feet to about hips width distance, coming back into our kneeling position. One knee and then the other. You can start to sit on your ankles to transition to a comfortable seat. If you'd like to have it, you can bring your blanket back to sit on, creating that comfortable place for your sitting bones. And here we're going to take a seated malasana squat. So nice and wide with the feet, toes are turned out, heels are turned in. You have your hands to your shins. Just try to press the pubic bone now down towards the earth. So you're shifting onto the front of your sitting bones, tilting the pelvis forward. And then take your left hand, reach across your body. So as belly grows, this might become more challenging. Just find any place that you can grip onto the opposite leg. So it might be your knee, your shin, and then gently reach the opposite arm up and over. And here it might feel good to straighten the left leg as you open. And then come up through center, switch the grasp. So take your right hand to the inside, maybe your right ankle or your right shin. And we're taking an open twist. So reach your left hand behind you, press through the finger pads, really twisting, creating space for the belly. This is a great way to get the rotation in the spine without compressing or creating abdominal pressure. We'll switch sides here. So bending the left knee once again, straightening the right leg long. Take your right hand over to the left leg, anywhere that feels good to you, and then stretch the left arm up and over. So again, creating a bit of traction here so you have that stable anchor in the clasp. And then you can just sort of lean away and let your body really be suspended for a moment from that anchor point. Coming up as you're ready, switching arms. So left hand comes to the inside of left foot. And then taking your right fingertips behind you, open twist. So really work on rotating the shoulders to the right using your left hand to press the left hip open. And then slowly release. We're setting up for our final resting posture now. So we'll be in Shavasana for two to five minutes, kind of however long is needed and called for. In pregnancy, there are a couple different options for Shavasana. Today I'll demonstrate a side-lying position. So we begin with that firm pillow, couch cushion, something that you have kind of out in front of you, and then use your blanket or your soft surface to create a bit of a pillow. So we're going to be on the left side of the body. So you can take your blanket out so that it's at the position of your head and slowly start to lower to the left side of your body. As you do so, have your cushion or your firm pillow kind of right in the middle of your torso. We'll come onto that cushioned surface, extend your left leg long, and then reach your right knee out in front of you. So you want the right knee to be completely supported by that firm pillow or bolster. You can curl your arms up however they feel best. And just allow your body to relax here. So this supported position in the knee takes some pressure off the pelvis, the hips. It just gives you a space where you can rest. Let your eyes softly close. Try to release any tension in the face, the neck. And give yourself full permission to relax, to be here for the next, as my teacher says, 108 moments. <laughs> so it's somewhere in the range of two to five minutes. Start to let go of any control over the breath. Let it come back to normal. It's natural rhythm. Shavasana was always my favorite place to really pay attention to movement in the belly. 
If you're not quite that far along yet, maybe just creating the anticipation, (laughs) daydreaming about what that might feel like to have someone else moving inside you. We'll shift towards silence now for the remainder of this relaxation. Only when you feel ready, call your awareness back into the space. Invite movement into your fingers and your toes. You might open the right arm skyward, stretching, reawakening the body from rest. And then taking your time, nice and slow, nice and easy, you can start to unpack in this posture. So reaching the right leg long, bending the knees to slowly press up. Coming back to that comfortable seated position, maybe keeping a soft gaze. Just allow your body to rest again for a moment in stillness, returning to that survey of the inner landscape, that scan from head to toe. What has shifted, if anything? What has changed? What remains? And how do you wish to step off your mat? What do you wish to carry with you from your practice? And what is best left here? With a hand to heart, hand to belly, I want to thank you so much for joining me for this very gentle practice. I hope it has felt just like a warm hug for the entire body and has soothed any aches and pains that you might be experiencing. It is such an honor to be a part of your movement journey. Thank you. Thank you for letting your body be moved.